ride anywhere we need to go We can ride all night up to the morning As long as we make the show We can be the best or we can be the worst We can be the best thing you ever heard With the motor singing and the grandstands ringing It's hard to put it all in words But this is how we ride, this is how we do So letting her go, letting her rip, letting her fly Tossing her in sideways, living the life Letting her ride, eyes side, when it die Cross her up on the cushion, crossing the line Caught some drama and some bullshit they didn't like And if they don't like the move, then we're ready to fly But this is how we ride, this is how we do Feather in the cap once again uh, here on the, the screen. It is World Finals Day. World Finals. Not 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 midterms. Finals, ladies and gentlemen. Not the midterms. The finals. And there's a lot of ridiculousness I've been seeing here recently. Personally, I I, I would I would put it in the ridiculousness category of course Scott Blumquist goes quick time one day and and people just can't handle themselves um and, and we're gonna we're gonna look into that as to why is it is is it really all hype or is all right um it's, it's gonna be an interesting day of course the schedule of events is a little bit different uh than what you are used to here in uh, dirt track racing world obviously three major classes there's not really a support class at all um and opening ceremonies was at four o'clock eastern so literally they're opening the ceremonies right now and heat race is coming up so we're just gonna briefly uh talk about some of the things that are happening tonight uh this is the actual schedule of events that is happening uh, you see, driver's meeting was at 3 Eastern, 345 motor heat. There may be a little bit of a delay here. Um, I'll have to pull up a actual... Actually, I'll do that right now. Uh, let's let's pull up the Dirt Vision broadcast and see where we are actually at uh, in the process of the World Finals. Hopefully, weather is fine. Didn't look into that personally. Uh, fireworks just went off actually here in the uh, broadcast on Dirt Vision. So might want to tune your TVs on, keep your phone here, but tune the TVs on to Dirt Vision as it looks like they are about to uh, go into racing action. Uh, this opening ceremony is taking quite a bit of time, uh, however. But anyways... Uh, looking at the schedule, it's, it's definitely going to be interesting. Sprint cars leading off the charge. Um, they're going to also, in these opening ceremonies, 
kind of recognize the World Outlaws online iRacing champion, Evan C. 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 So C. E. C. E. S. E. A. Y. That's an interesting last name. Regardless, four heat races in the late models. It looks like six heat races, or four heat races in the sprint cars. Uh, six heat races in the late models. Four in the Super Dirt Car Series. Uh, then a, a dash draw in each series. C main in the sprint cars. A dash in the sprint cars. A B main in the sprint cars. So kind of the same thing, just last chances uh, in, in order. And then even the main event's going to be in order. Sprint car's going to lead it off. Late models and then Super Dirt Car Series racing action to close the night off the main story of the of the day it seems or or the main headline to come out of last night's racing action was scott bloomquist uh picking up a quick time award um and everybody's like the the aliens have landed bloomers back i mean it's going to be interesting to see how sustainable this is sustainability has been an issue for scott bloomquist over the last few years uh not just at you know, throughout the year, but even within a racing night, uh, even to start the year, I believe he was in that big frog 58 car and was fast and then wasn't fast and then was at the races, but wasn't at the races. So it's hard to understand what is actually happening, but I will show you something. This, the qualifying that he uh, went quick in was Friday's uh, qualifying action. And to find that you got to go down here. So that's, World of Outlaws qualifying for the late models. You see Scott Bloomquist there with a 15 6 4 8. Uh, Madden second, Ricky Thornton Jr. in third. Obviously, these are split fields because that's group A. This is group B. You'll see Hoffman, McCready, uh, Dell McDowell. Why is it Dell McDowell getting any praise for being quick time? He's quick time as well. And that's kind of what I wanted to point out. You know, this was Friday's racing uh, qualifying action. And when you look into Thursdays, you are like, okay, well, I guess he's got to be top five or something on Thursdays qualifying, and he's not. Uh, actually was in 12th with a 15.769, which was seven-ish tenths off of Brandon Overton, who was quick time, which, crazy enough, you have in the story them referencing Brandon Overton and Scott Bloomquist as quickest overall. When in reality, Brandon Overton was quickest of one night's group. Uh, he was seven tenths faster than Scott Bloomquist in the same night or, or same group of qualifying. And then on the Friday night qualifying, Bloomquist basically went just a little faster than his previous lap of a, a 15 7 6 9. He went 15 6 4 8 to be the fastest in group A on Friday. And then to add, it isn't just Brandon Overton. And Scott Bloomquist, that qualified fastest, it is also Dale McDowell. And it is also, why is this not a big story? Mike Marlar went quick for tonight's racing action in Group A. He'll be rolling out, I believe, on the pole of heat race number one for your late models tonight. And he went with a 15 one, one seven. Um, So Mike Marlar, and, and honestly, if you want to talk about c consistency, Chris Madden there in second, but Marlar just switching to Skyline Motorsports, new team, new operation, new everything for the for the race this weekend and on into the future and next year. And he rolls out and out, out qualifies Madden, Dillard, O'Neill, Hoffman, Tyler Erb. I mean, pretty good little uh, mix of Bronsons in there, Shirley Ziegler, Tanner English in there, Chris Ferguson, Dennis Erb Jr. in there, Tim McCready, Brandon Shepard in this list. Jonathan Davenport in this list, although I believe he got into the wall. But you look at this, and even Mike Marlar went out extremely late. Look at that. He, it shows that he went out 36th in the group. Uh, I mean, a lot of these are towards the higher ends, but it's kind of a decent mixture. 14, 26, uh, second. Tanner English went out second, went 10th. Bronson went out 6th, went 11th. So Mike Marlar, decently impressive here. Um, I just don't see the consistency from Bloomquist to be getting this type of attention. Obviously, 
it does help that you are Scott Bloomquist and the racing world is begging for you to be uh, Scott Bloomquist again. They want the hero to rise out of the grave. He's like the undertaker of the dirt late model world. Uh, Marlar, speaking of him, he was pretty consistent, fast overall Thursday, six fastest overall uh, on Friday's group. Uh, but Chris Madden probably deserves the consistency award. He went second on the Friday night qualifying and then uh, second as well in the Thursday night qualifying, 15-1-3-9. The, the big difference here is obviously the track was a, about a half second faster in qualifying, it looks like, for the late models. And Mike Marlar stayed relatively within that same performance range uh, as a with a tacked-up track and a wore-out track, a five-tenth slower track. But Chris Madden was up there, unlike Bloomquist, who was – Obviously, off the pace when the pace was up, he was, you know, seven tenths off when the pace was fast. Madden was there when the pace was fast, and Madden was also there uh, when the pace slowed down and ended up second, still with the fifteen seven four one. So uh, it, it, it'll be interesting. These late models, I mean, the competition level just blows the sprint cars out of the water. It is pretty damn sad. But the sprint cars do have the championship battle. Uh, it is pretty much impossible for David Gravel to to uh, catch Brad Sweet. Uh, you do have David Gravel starting on the inside of the front row here in uh, the heat race number four, which, let's see, are they got, they got heat races on the track just yet? Uh, they are still singing the national anthem. So we are not into the racing action just yet, but racing action is eventually going to be pulled on the track here momentarily. Uh, but that's a pretty good heat race for Gravel right next to Selzy. You know, Selzy's kind of wild. Brian Brown's fast. Macri's fast. A tough front two rows there uh, in that heat race for Gravel. But he needs to get that one done. And he also needs Logan Shuhart, Justin Peck, Devin Borden, Brock Zierfoss, and Courtney to do some damage against Sweet in heat race three. These heat races set up the lineup for the main events. Line up and start in position, unlike the late models where you can win from anywhere. That's a different story in the sprint car industry. You need a really good start. You need help uh, to start the A main event if you want to keep up with these guys. They're just and, and and in a weird way, it's because the sprint cars are very close. It's hard to be faster than another guy. They do have the wings that kind of slot car the car itself onto the track, so it's just hard to make up ground. Uh, but Gravel and Sweet performing well to start this one. We'll look at the heat race lineup. Sheldon Hottenshaw with an impressive uh, qualifying effort. Usually not known for that, but he's going to be on the front row pole. Uh, looks like 14 car, 13 car heat races here. So these heat races are big. They are only going eight laps as well. Uh, still in the national anthem. We're not missing anything. I will get out of here once I roll through this and we get into the chat just a little bit. May do some post race. We will see. Um, but Macedo and then Elias and Hayford Teep Jr. there in the second row. Um, that'll be interesting to see how Hayford Teep goes and how Corey Eliason goes in that eight car. Uh, Rico and Brent Marks on the front row of, of, of heat race number two. That is is tough. You also have Cole Macedo in a team car with Carson, uh, 14 machine, and then the 69K, the Lance Deweese, the, 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 Legendary car, the splitting this year. Justin Henderson in that car. It's very fast already. Uh, Hunter Schoenberg, Kane. That's a decent heat race. And then that heat race three is pretty stout. I mean, Courtney, Sweet, Shuhart, Peck, Borden, who is extremely impressive. Devin Borden just shows up, finally gets out of PA uh, with that team. And they're faster than Tanner Holmes, faster than Parker Price Miller. Um, it looks like they were faster than Chase Randall, faster than Austin McCarl, faster than Spencer Baston. Um, let's see what else he, who, or who else he was faster than. I mean, there were some good names that he outqualified, uh, faster than Lance Deweese, faster than Jacob Allen, faster, uh, than, uh, uh, James McFadden. So really impressive run out of the gate for Devin Borden. I'm sure he's looking to make some noise, but heat race three looks to be the toughest one. That I've read so far, and four is right there with it, with Gravel, Selzy, Brown, Macri, shots involved there in your first three rows. That's a tough, that's a tough heat race, but I'm still gonna slide up. I'm gonna say heat race number three here in the sprint cars coming up is gonna be uh one of the heat races to keep your eye on to see how things play out. But gravel sweet, every point matters, every spot matters. But really, over three days, if there if there's a chance 
for David Gravel, Brad Sweet will have to suffer some kind of major issue in the main event, similar to Devil's Bow, but without the ability to come back and, and make up points. But there's going to have to be a big, big swing on the racetrack in the negative for Brad Sweet, for David Gravel to win this. And honestly, Brad Sweet on the way out, we saw a bunch of posts and stories out there on the way out from the Outlaws, getting ready to stick it to him with Larson in this new series. I mean, I don't know if anybody within the series is 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 cheering for Brad Sweet to lose or have issues. Um, but you never know. Back to the Hillary Trump aspect of how this Larson Sweet versus Outlaws, Dirt Vision versus Flow thing could all be an intricate plan to promote through controversy because controversy sells. So uh, whether they're making the outlaws bigger or high limit bigger, they're making sprint car racing bigger by causing all this controversy between all these foes and, and being implemented into national headlines, not just in racing, but also in the regular world because it's a lot of intriguing new things for regular people. They've never heard of this sprint car thing and this argument and fight between everyone right now is definitely popping up on social feeds and getting in front of a lot of people. So this could be Vince McMahon versus Stone Cold here. And and that's very funny because obviously Stone Cold worked or works for Vince, but they played, you know, as a uh, I'm a wrestler versus the boss type of mentality to grow wrestling. And and even WCW versus WWE growed wrestling through the through the battle. They could be possibly playing it here with with Sweet uh versus Carter. Uh, you know, the, 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 the racer versus the boss. It's very emulating of that situation. Uh, but if, if you're corporatized, if, if you are a Carter, if you are a, a Dirt Vision lifer, you might be cheering for David Gravel. Obviously, uh, Houston's is a Dirt Vision track. There's a tie there. Um, so a lot of people on that side of the fence wanting David Gravel to get this thing done. But Brad Sweet needs something significant to go wrong. Big time needs it to go go south. Uh, they are still in opening ceremonies right now, I believe. Um, let me see here. Maybe not. Nope. Nope. Heat Race 1 is on the track. Or is Heat Race 1 finished? Nope. Heat Race 1 is on the track. Looks like we may have had a, a wreck or something. Already? It's like we went green in the heat. They got the car stopped. Oh, Corey Elias in a new car, a little contact. Sheldon out to the lead. It's a very sunny day. They got this thing going very early. I can't remember it being this way in the past. But I believe this is the first year on this whole trying to... Oh, wow. Big, gigantic flip throttle stuck. Oh, my God. Oh my god, I, I feel like I have to show this. I feel like I have to show this. If they sue me, that's fine, but... Ladies and gentlemen, um, look at this. This is extremely bad. Kids, back away. Oh my god. Look at this. And they went red. Wow. Wow. And it's still going. They pulled the camera off. No word on if he's okay or not, but wow. How about that? Ladies and gentlemen, who saw that coming? My oh my. That is insane. I just, I, I, I'm kind of shocked at how, kind of shocked at how crazy that was. Just look at this. I mean, in, in the, in the, the tire, I mean, the throttle stays going. And they peel off. I mean, it's, it's pulling a wheelie with no, with no tires on, no front tires. I mean, it's it, the whole car is destroyed. It's chopped to the damn radiator. 
which is when the next support of braces on the chassis are located to protect the engine. But, I mean, this car goes and stays go. I can't even tell who it is. It looks like potentially Zeb Wise. I believe that is Zeb Wise. Looking, yeah, 26 Zeb Wise. That's who that was. Wow. Wow. Unbelievable. Wow. That's insane, guys. Uh, I don't know who's tuned in or who's who is or isn't watching, but but wow. I mean, um, wow. Interesting. How about that one, Zeb Wise, who's went for some rides in his day. That was that was not a good one. Wow, crew still working on Zeb Wise. I I don't know. I need to get some volume myself. For the for the broadcast, I guess. I haven't heard anything. People are saying he's still in the car. to 10 to Zeb Wise, who was involved along with Ryan Roberts in a very scary accident over in turn four on the first lap of the case number one engine oil heat race. Again, if we receive further word from the safety crew, any updates at all? We Don't look like they're giving any updates at all. We are, st they're at commercial. Charlotte Motor Speedway, again, the safety crew still tending to Zebwise, the driver of the Redune Racing number 26. In the meantime, the rest of the field in the case number one, engine oil. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. Still working on the car. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Wise is conscious and alert. They are being very, very careful getting him extracted from the race car. But the word we get is that Zeb Wise is conscious, alert. They're just taking their time and being very careful getting him extricated from the race car. So good news from turn four, the driver of the Redeen Racing number 26. Wow. That's insane. So, I mean, I guess he is, uh, uh, you know, that's good, alert, alive, um, you know, um, obviously the getting hurt aspect is something that you somewhat accept. So if he did, you know, get hurt, I mean, it's unfortunate, but that's, that's unfortunately as well. Sprint car racing, is it not? Um, wow though. Didn't see that turn of events coming. Uh, who do y'all got tonight? Um, I, I, I think I'm going to go give you, we'll give everybody three picks. How about this? I'll start it off. Like this, we'll do this. Late models. Let's see, can we even put it in here like this? And, and then like the three. Like, uh, let's see. Um, well, who would be a longer shot than that? Um, huh. I don't know. Who would be? It would be a long shot in the late models. About just two. Marlar, RTJ in the late models. I'll go Gravel. Hot and Child. And then who is even in the modifieds? I guess Williamson. I don't know. Williamson, uh, McLaughlin, I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, I just wanted to do a little bit. Of, I, didn't, I didn't see that this uh, this wreck was, was going to occur and everybody is going to freak out and, and things were going to happen. But regardless, I do have things to do. I know, believe it or not, it's, it's unbelievable. Uh, but <laughs> I just wanted to give a check-in pre-race. The races is underway. I don't want to take away from Dirt Vision. 
Um, and we will um, be on here potentially for a post race. It depends on if people want it or if they don't. Uh, but anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. We'll see if the Bloom Quiz Surge can continue. Like the video, comment below, uh, share the video around, uh, join the memberships here to get your name up there. And as always, be sure to subscribe. We will catch you next time. Sounds like I got to catch them all. Pokemon. Bye. As long as we